সালামু আলাইকুম প্রিয় দর্শক আপনাদের সবাইকে শুভেচ্ছা সহ শুরু করছি আজকে মিত্র কাপনি অনুষ্ঠান আমি আকরামুল হোসেন আছি আপনাদের সাথে প্রিয় দর্শক আজকে আমরা আপনাদের সাথে একটি দারুণ গল্প নিয়ে এসেছি আপনাদের সাথে দারুণ একটি গল্প আজকে শেয়ার করব আমরা জানি যে আমাদের ইন্ডাস্ট্রি যে কারি ইন্ডাস্ট্রি নিয়ে আমরা প্রোগ্রাম করি সেই ইন্ডাস্ট্রিতে অনেক ধরনের স্ট্রাগল আছে অনেক সংগ্রাম আছে এবং সেই সংগ্রামগুলো মোকাবেলা করতে হয় এবং সেই মোকাবেলা করার ক্ষেত্রে আমাদেরকে অবশ্যই কিছু পন্থাই ব্যবহার করতে হয় আমি যেটা বলতে চাচ্ছি যে যে কোনো ধরনের গুড স্ট্র্যাটেজি আপনার বিজনেসকে প্রমোট করবে এবং সেই প্রমোশনটাকে আপনি আপনার এই ব্যবসার সফলতা বা সাকসেসের জন্য কাজে লাগাতে পারবেন আমি আজকে এমন একটি গল্প আপনাদের সাথে শেয়ার করব এবং সেই গল্পের যে নায়ক আমরা বলবো গল্পের যে হিরো তাকেও আমরা নিয়ে এসেছি এবং দীর্ঘ প্রায় দুই দুই ঘন্টা ত্রিশ মিনিট ড্রাইভ করে তিনি আজকে আমাদের সাথে এসে জয়েন করেছেন এবং মির্দা গাভনারের আজকের ইন্সপারেশনাল গাভনার যিনি তার কাছে যাওয়ার আগে আমরা চলুন তার তাকে নিয়ে একটি চ্যানেল ফাইভে একটি নিউজ হয়েছে সেই নিউজটি দেখার পরে আপনারা বুঝতে পারবেন কেন আজকে তিনি আমাদের ইন্সপারেশনাল গভর্নার হিসাবে জয়েন করেছেন সো লেটস কো ফর দি ভিডিও উই হ্যাভ এ ভেরি ফ্যান্টাস্টিক নিউজ কাভার্ড বাই টি চ্যানেল ফাইভ অ্যান্ড উই ক্যান ওয়াচ দ্যাট অ্যান্ড আফটার দ্যাট we're going to come to our guest. As takeaway owner Faz Ahmed found out in 2018. We hadn't even gone over five miles. And we're going 500 miles. So it was the longest delivery we've ever done. The long distance order had come from a group of British expats. They craved a curry so much that they chartered a private plane to bring Faz and his legendary dishes from Hampshire all the way over to them in France. You know, it was quite a small plane and we put the curry in and there was a lot of curry. There was pomodons and stuff, so, you know, we were kind of on top of everything and the whole plane stunk of curry. I'm not going to lie to you. It was, it was almost as bad as our kitchen. We landed in Bordeaux and we set up all the curries, it was in a, a room in a hangar and they just said, oh, we're missing that spicy food. It's very crazy to think that, you know, people just love their takeaway, that food, you know, that British food, they're just missing it so much that they'll go to these extreme lengths, you know, they just really miss their curry fix. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Welcome to show. Thank you for having me. It was really inspiring. Yeah, no, we got really good publicity That's out yeah. of it. So our, our aim was, you know, people that can't get curry, how do we get it across to them? So in the UK, obviously, there's a lot of Indian restaurants everywhere, but in France, there's hardly any. And the problem with France is they don't act like hot food. So English people can now really have hot food like us. Mm -hmm. So they were, you know, asking me, kept asking me two years, you know, how can you get us a curry give us a curry give us a curry so we then said okay that's it we're gonna hire a private how plane come, how come they are from france i mean so, why so they're france? english but they've moved to france okay. so they're expats okay so a lot of english people have moved to different countries yeah. and they can't get hot curry okay so you know that's why they said that's why you say curry lover curry, english lover. curry lover yeah? yeah whatever they're there they, they can't really forget their loves no, no, they, they love it, they crave it. There's a big community on Facebook as well. I have a Facebook group called The Art of British Curry. Okay. So we share recipes and people all over the world. You wow. know, there's people who's gone to America. You know, our restaurant's been open 40 plus years now. 40 plus? 40 plus. I yeah, think 40. you are not 40. No, I'm not 40. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it's, no. From, it's from your forefathers or your father? From my father, yeah. Okay. So we've, even though we were educated in, in, in the UK, we took a degree, but we went to curry. You know, our passion is in the curry industry. Mm -hmm. Um, me and my brother, you know, we're both educated in the, in the UK, but a lot of people don't go down that route and the job, like being a chef or something, is looked down upon in our community, which is, I think, wrong. You know, we wouldn't look down upon an Italian chef mm -hmm. or, a, you know, any other tapas chef, no, a Spanish chef. Absolutely, yeah. So we, I think we, we're proud to say when you become Italian chef, we say proudly that we have the chef. I'm working in the five-star restaurant, but exactly. in our case, it's, it's different, it's opposite. Why is that? I, I don't know. People look at the curry industry like, oh, if you're born in this country and you've gone into the curry industry, it means you couldn't get any other job. Mm 
Mm -hmm. But that's not always true. And we've got to move away from that because the problem like we talked about just before is the young blood are not coming through. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of restaurants, I think before in COVID. In front of me is a young blood. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not, yeah. <laughs> There's a few of us. There's an exception. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we... It's always complaining. Always complaining. There's young generation are not coming into the restaurant. But I believe, yeah, it's not a fault or it's not a... Uh, something that we can think young generation are coming yeah. they are really want to come probably uh, if they get a good uh, support yeah environment de definitely I think I think we have to change the industry we've changed a lot of ours ours our restaurant majority workers are English okay not uh, Bangladeshi mm -hmm. I have two 16 year old boys who are training to be Indian chefs okay. they're English right so they want to do it they you know they're doing chefing at college and they're doing full-time work with me mm -hmm. and one is doing part-time so they want to do it they want to become a chef they want to become an Indian chef so what is our own people not coming through but English people want to do it so we've got to look at it and we've got to really you know otherwise I, I think before COVID, four Indian restaurants a week were closing. Yes. I yeah. think probably more now. So it's going to become extinct. Absolutely. You know, so we've got to carry it on, keep carrying on, get the young blood in through. Um, chefs, as you know, very hard to yes. get to get now, you know. And that's why you become a chef? Or Th that's you why I'm a chef. to become a chef? Well, I never set out to become a chef, I'll be honest. I do have a passion for it now. But... Through the years, I worked in our restaurant ever since I was in school, part-time, all the way through university. I was mainly front of house. That's what we are very, very much interested that when you guys, like, we are going to school 15, 16 years, then go to the takeaway or restaurant and work Friday and Saturday, busy hours, you know, then learn from it and get the interest but in that time probably uh, the, the, the thing very important thing is like we need to understand uh, how to deal with young generation uh, at the beginning we need to give them uh, a little bit of uh, pleasure and uh, appreciation about their work what they are doing then probably in future uh, they may coming back yeah yeah uh, I think you're right you know we had that period we were in when we were young and we liked the money, you know, it was coming in. You know. I, I was 15 and I was getting paid, you know. <laughs> so I was going to school with uh, with money and none of my friends had uh, money. So no, uh, not, not just the money, but I think you're right. Exactly what you said. You've got to get them interested. And then we pulled out for a little bit as well. You know, we thought, you know, for a few months we didn't go into work. But then we saw, you know, this is uh, a future for us. This is, we've got to carry it on. I think 90%, maybe, or 80% are owned by Bangladeshis, yes. Indian restaurant in the UK. Uh, if you sell like this, I think 95%. 95%. So 95%, yeah. this is our proud it's tradition. Approximately, we're not, we're not sure on live. Uh, but, but something like that yeah. is very high. Indian anyway. restaurant is mainly yeah. Bangladeshi owners. It's mainly Bangladeshi owners. You know, 80, I think 80% minimum. Yeah. So this is number one food in the UK. Absolutely. Beats fish and chips, beats everything. So this is, we done this. Mm -hmm. As a Bangladeshi people, we should be proud. Yeah. And we need to keep that because that's our one marker legacy in, in the UK. We can say, look, we started Indian restaurants and now it's the most eaten food in the whole UK. Mm -hmm. More than any food in the Fudge, UK. one thing I want to know, like, to do something like this and Channel 5 covered you, yeah. is a huge PR, right? Huge PR. We, we we're very lucky because uh, we have we focus a lot on PR, and you've got to focus mm. on PR. Mm. Now, any business you have, you've got to focus on PR. If you have no customers, you have no business. No. So we're very lucky because we got a very strong uh, partnership with the University of Portsmouth, okay. who I know you know quite well. Yes, Bobby and people like that. So yeah, absolutely. You know them very yeah, well. I yeah, I know them very well. Yeah. yeah. So we have a good strategic partnership with them. So a lot of students work in our restaurant okay. for work experience or so I have video editors, I have photographers, wow. I have social media marketing, I have people who write our press releases. So this can I mean we're only one restaurant. We're not a chain. Oh. You know, we're only you've been there. It's only one restaurant. So the amount of labour that's going in, if we had to pay for it, would be bankrupt. But because of the university, we have initiatives like, you know, come and do a three-month placement with us, four-month, five-month placement. So a lot of the filming that we do are done by University of Portsmouth students. A lot of the press releases that are written are done by students. Wow. Um, a lot of the photos, anything that's... A, 
a lot of it's students. So you've got to take every opportunity as you can and maximise them. We, we're very lucky because we have such a good university, you know, a really active university who we could work with. But anyone like that, you can get on board to help you. Any partners, we have, um, we have Biscos as well, Bisco solicitors, our partners. They're advising us on now getting um, workers from overseas. Mm -hmm. I know the rules have relaxed, which is another thing. So yes. it's very important to build these relationships with these people. You think a curry house and a university or a curry house or a solicitors firm, how would they work? You know, but it works. You know, we have a good relationship with Portsmouth Football Club as well. So I think you've got to get into the community, know the the business leaders, the you know the high profile people, and you can always help each other. Like I said, the university is massive help for us. Massive help. That's that's really good, and uh, I probably every city uh, we are in, uh, there is a university, there is a college can yeah. offer students come for the placement. And I think it's a very easy way to go forward. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But so you have to take the initiative. One thing I just want to know from you is how long you've been working in the industry? In the industry, oh, too long now. <laughs> Ever since I was 15. Is it? So uh, about 18, 19 years. Wow. Maybe more. So you don't yeah. want to disclose your age now, right? <laughs> no, no, that's right. <laughs> you're, you're very, I was about to disclose my age, but then you said it and I thought, I won't disclose it. But the pre are probably worked out. Yeah, they, so. they will work yeah, out. Yeah, so. Anyway, so it's still you are very young and it yeah. looks very young. Oh, thank you. And, and, and it's, re it's, really, it's really interesting to see someone like doing very good and sending career. Uh, it's, uh, it's like over the... Over to France. France. Yeah, yeah. And so it's really interesting, you know. When I've heard that, like, I can say the boy with the curry uh, and sending so to, to France. Yeah. France. Well, we're very lucky, but like I said, it was very well managed. You know, we let the media know, and you know, we've we had a, when we before we took off, we invited the media, so we got a lot of. Um, press out of it but we pushed it as well we know quite a few journalists as well so yeah we're lucky you know in that sense but we're doing a lot of other things now um, so we have like YouTube videos where we're teaching people how to cook mm -hmm. so people in China are messaging me on my YouTube saying right we can't get curry here thank you for the videos wow. we've got a book coming out next year um, so we're really so you, trying to you're push. writing all this curry yeah yeah you're telling the story of the curry and yeah you're right you're telling the ingredients of this curry exactly Fantastic. so we have a story really we have a, but it's it's a lot of we do you know the videos and that we do is serves many purposes mm -hmm. so one is is training our sh our chefs at the moment mm -hmm. so we've got few trainee chefs they watch my youtube they see how do i work so it's helping our restaurant mm -hmm. and then it's helping people outside as well who are in a different country or whatever mm -hmm. but we have a lot of plans you know we're very ambitious and Inshallah, next uh, year we have plans to, um, you know, have a big plan to try and take our food globally. Hopefully, is it? hopefully, yeah, yeah. Is, is it in China or uh, India and Bangladesh? <laughs> <laughs> well, India and Bangladesh doesn't need doesn't need it doesn't because need. they. But okay, let, let me let me ask you something about your motherland. Yeah. Are you from Bangladesh? Definitely. Yes, I'm from Bangladesh. Yeah. So tell us about. You've been to Bangladesh. I've been to Bangladesh been a few to Bangladesh? times, yeah, yeah. Recently? Recently, I went uh, about two and a half, three years ago. Okay. Where two and a half from? years ago. I'm from Silet um, Khodom Tolli Kusai. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so probably someone from your areas, if they're watching. Yeah. Then after the uh, Faj uh, Kusai, no? Kusai, but yeah, Kusai, yeah. Kusai. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Kusai Chale, Ebong Aske Amadeh Shate, Meet the governor, inspirational governor is away. I soon after I didn't push you, but the time at Matro Bekti, J. Franco, Kari Fatai Suntani, a customer has a little like it and cook famous on a borrower on newspaper or tiny name. I say among after the Raja Channel Fiber Motor Channel Gulaba, BBC, then interview. Guess a radio station, ITV, Sky News, every British big. Outlet covered it, every Fantastic. single one, uh, and around the world as well. So China, Japan covered it as well. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. It went, wow. uh, it went national. Um, my fr uh, friend saw it in Canada, uh, America, Poland. I have all these friends, and they sent it I'm to really, me. I'm really, I'm really proud to. I'm really yeah, proud to you. you. Uh, and uh, as you said, uh, university, then you you made the connection. It's it's not yes. like. 
probably if you live in Cambridge, if you live in Oxford, if you, if you don't know someone, you can try. But if, if you don't try, then you can't really get anything. Nobody will give you something in your mouth. Well, for free. Yeah, Absolutely. no, you, you have to build these connections. You know, like I said the, earlier, the two trainee boys, they're from college. So I stabbed the way I recruited them was I knew the college and I said, I need, I can't get any chefs. Mm -hmm. Give me someone from your class who can do, you know, little bits. So and you'll teach them. And we'll teach them. So they already had a head start because they're already doing a chefing course. So mm -hmm. I think our industry has to change because we think we have to employ a full chef and that's it. Fantastic. Fantastic. One question. One question is there. Uh, Faj, ask it of Faj Bollen. The Amadir industry uh, has to change. To change, to improve, we believe that. But I'm not sure if you're a kid, but I'm not sure if you're a kid. I'm not sure if you're a kid. I'm not sure if you're a kid in favor of our car industry, or it will really not favoring to our car industry. Let's go for the short break. After that, we're going to come back. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Stay, right? I'm going to you know, stay, yeah, yeah. To France. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not going to fly. No, We've no, got no. a helicopter, maybe Spain, I might go to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Piro Dasho. I'm going to check the video today. Piro did poor. सुपरिचित फ्रांस कारी पाठिए विमान रेस्टुरेंट गो पांच माइल डेलिवरि दीते पारे ना, शेखाने उन्हीं मोनो मोर देन 500 माइल्स है, माय राइट? या 500, मोर जस्ट ओवर 500 माइल्स। जस्ट ओवर 500 माइल्स, यस। या, वी हैव डिस्कस्ड। वी वी एक्चुअली वेंट टू इटली एस वेल, व्हिच इज़ अ थाउजेंड माइल्स। इज़ इट? या, दैट्स अ लॉन्गेस्ट। When was it? Uh, Italy was a couple of years ago now. Okay, we well, before Italy. France or after? Before it was France. So we've done France, Italy. So I've gone 500 miles, 1,000 miles. I don't know where my next one is going to be. Wow. But I want to keep going really? as far as I can. Maybe Australia one day. Wow, that's good. <laughs> Inshallah. So I think, it, was it very difficult to manage all these things? And, send? Was, and was it so expensive as well? It, it was. It was expensive, but we were very lucky because we knew a pilot okay. who helped us with the, because the flight was the most expensive. Yeah. So the flight cost £10,000, well oh. should have cost £10,000, yeah. but we got a big discount. I flew back with EasyJet for £30. Okay. <laughs> with EasyJet. After delivering. After yeah. delivering. Like yeah. a delivery yeah. driver. <laughs> yeah. I done the delivery and then I went to the airport and I, I came back. But logistically as well, it took a lot of planning. Because you have a lot of like landing fees, you've got to tell people you're landing. Because we went to private airports, mm -hmm. so it wasn't like commercial airports. No. Uh, a lot to think about as well. Um, the cost was the biggest one, trying to get the cost down. Mm -hmm. So, and we only charged the customer thirty-two pound okay. per person. So you think? So how many how many uh, curries there? A hundred curries. Hundred curries. How curries many there. customers? Uh, about a hundred, uh, just under hundred. Sorry, about fifty-ish. Customers, yeah, yeah. So they took, you know, we took extra because in case anything happened, Absolutely. we can't just go back and get get it. So, so how long did it take? A flight took uh, one hour. One, one hour. hour. So well, it's not, it's not that much. Normally, the restaurant uh, yeah. delivery time is one hour. Well, one hour. Yeah, we done it, but we stopped in two places. So it okay. took a bit longer than an hour. Okay. But actually, if we went direct, because we went to, uh, we stopped in a place to get our visas okay uh, we could have gone direct to bordeaux but it would have cost more oh, right. so we stopped in cholet okay um and the police guards were there and they want to take a picture because it went so big they want okay. to show their mom and dad that they saw the curry um then we went to uh, another place cherbourg cherbourg was the the person who sponsored it mm -hmm. he's a very he's very big in the french aviation okay. industry he controls i think 50 60 percent of france aviation very big company he's got so he was a major sponsor in it he took me to his flying school mm -hmm. so i went to his flying school they put the red carpet for me wow. and um basically they had simulators everything and i met a lot of his pilots so yeah no That's it was a, very very well looked after there um, and then eventually we went to Bordeaux and then they had it in the uh, airfield there. Okay. Uh, after doing this, uh, did you see any difference 
in your business? Yeah, we had the busiest January we ever had in our life. Is it? Really big, even to this day. What we're about three years, four years on now. People are still talking about it. They come in the restaurant. They said, "I'm from Italy. I saw you, um, you know, flying the curries." That, that means it's attract your customers. Oh, huge, huge oh. attraction. Yeah, nationally, nationally was the most coverage, but it went international. But people remember it. Oh, this is the restaurant that flew a curry to France, you know, blah, blah, blah. and people remember that story because we got such heavy coverage. So even now, you know, uh, from when we got it in January, it was very busy, mm -hmm. you know, straight away, people flooded to our restaurant. Um, and then are they coming from only Portsmouth or different areas? Uh, they're coming from Portsmouth. So it's given them a reminder, even existing customers, okay. but a, f a bit further out. So people are traveling like 10, 15, 20 miles to say, oh my God, they, their curries must be so good. They had to fly it to France, Absolutely, you know, yeah. so, but yeah, no, we, uh, yeah, we, it's, it's definitely, I think for life now that has cemented a mark on the industry for us I think. and you are the founder of this well yeah I was I think it was it was just you know we wanted to satisfy our customer so the customer we gave it to he's been coming to the restaurant since he was five years old really yeah yeah so he was oh. in Gosport which is near Portsmouth he's Akash boy yeah he's Akash boy yeah yeah he's got the menu tattooed on his back wow <laughs> no, I'm joking <laughs> you're joking no problem I'm joking, but, uh, okay let me yeah. just uh, ask you something about your uh, family yes yeah so you bo born in this country, right? I'm born in the UK, yeah. In the UK. And then uh, who else with you? In your so family? I have a brother uh, who runs a restaurant with me. You, uh, with you as well? With me, yeah. And I have one sister. Who I think you know, you know my yeah. sister. Yeah, you went to Bangladesh yeah, with yeah, my sister. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're so going you know for a trade mission. Trade mission, yes. With yeah, yeah, with the university. And uh, yeah, that's really glad. Uh, and uh, what do you think that uh, normally uh, who were born in this country, they want to go Bangladesh or they want to spend their time. Yeah. But I think uh, nowadays it's not happening that that much. No, no. Uh, have you been to Bangladesh? So how did you find Bangladesh? I, I, I was very lucky because the Ministry of Civil Aviation and Tourism, um, uh, Mahbub Ali, mm -hmm. he had sponsored my trip to go there as uh, an influential figure. Okay. So they, um, I went round to Cox's Bazaar, Bandorbon, Shundorbon, I think uh, about 12, 10, 12 districts I travelled. So okay. I was very lucky, I travelled all around, so I saw the food, how it differed from different region to region, um, but what a beautiful country. I really, really, I'm not, people might sound biased because I'm Bangladeshi, but really if you go there, it's got so many, you know, it's got the longest beach in the world. Yeah. It's got the long, uh, Cox largest Bazaar. Cox Bazaar, largest mangrove forest in the world. And um, Poi Hali Boishak, I went the second day. What's that? Poi Hali Boishak, is it? <laughs> Poi Hali Boishak. Poi Hali Boishak. So, <laughs> sorry, first, sorry. Uh, first day, no, no, that's for the first day of, uh, of the year. Of the new year yeah, and new a year. massive celebration in Dhaka University. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Most amazing thing I've ever seen in my you life. Enjoyed I enjoyed that. I really, really enjoyed it. Really, really enjoyed it. And you see the colourful, right? Very colourful. Very colourful. Yeah. No. Well, I'm doing a documentary on the food and my trip to Bangladesh. Okay. Have you done so, it? Uh, it's in the process at the moment. So hopefully soon. So I'll talk about the food. And the. I think we talked on the break. The biggest um, kind of debate is the restaurant style is different from home style. Mm -hmm. And it is different. Yeah, it's different. It is different, but there's no, I don't think right or wrong, it's different style, you know. As a business, Indian restaurants have modified it more for the British palate. Mm -hmm. You know, like we were talking, we have meat, chicken on the bone, but the Brits have knife and fork, they like it boneless. Yes. Uh, plus as a restaurant, you know, we don't know how many people we're serving, we don't know what curries are going to come in, so we have base gravy. Yeah. You know, so. And not much people like uh, they like gravy when they eat. Uh, in our in our people, yeah, not yeah. English people. Uh, and they they and then if you try to avoid it, then it's going to take time to cook. Yeah. And it's another disadvantage for. Yeah, a lot of people in my group. I have a Facebook group called the Art of British Curry. Mm -hmm. So we have these debates. We give recipes, and people talk like you know. Some people say, I want it exactly how the restaurant does it. I don't want a home style. Okay. Now, but home style is uh, slightly easier, I would say. Our preparation in Indian restaurant is longer. So we're quicker on service. Mm 
Mm. So we know, look, orders are coming in Friday, Saturday night, very busy. We can make a curry within a couple of minutes. Mm. But home, you know, okay, you know, you're coming around my house, you're bringing your wife, you know, some other guests. I know there's six people, I can make this much, I can make thing. Preparation is less, but cooking time mm. is longer. Yeah. So it's, it's a big, big debate. You know. But which one do you think that is a preferable for our industry to make it more better? So I think as an Indian restaurant, we have no choice but to make it with a lot of prep. Because, you know, if, if you come into a restaurant and you said, right, make it from scratch, you know, home style, you're going to be waiting an hour and a half, two hours. You're not it's going to wait that work. long. So it's very difficult for us to, I mean, we could pre-make some dishes but then with the base gravy you have flexibility mm -hmm. because that curry that base sauce makes everything korma you, vindaloo masala yeah. everything you, you visited the different different regions in bangladesh yes. right so which area of food you think that very similar to curry industry is there any any curry you what, got it? well in dhaka now and mm -hmm. cox bazaar they're very become very commercialized mm -hmm. because the uh, uh, Cox Bazaar is the most visited area in Bangladesh mm -hmm. and Dhaka a lot of people for business they go so it's very they've become a lot more uh, Western you know they have uh, I stayed in intercontinental and they had a lot of European food so not so much curry and I traveled with journalists okay. you know from 10 different countries okay. um, international journalists um, and one of the journalists, I'll never forget, so she said to me, um, she's from Belgium, she said to me, I, I only eat rice twice a month. Is it? And she came to Bangladesh and obviously, <laughs> oh, as you can imagine, every single time we had lunch or dinner was with rice. <laughs> so when we went to like um, outskirts, uh, sort of Bandaban, Shundaban, there, were, there wasn't very much commercialized thing, so it was always rice and curry. Yeah. She said, I can't wait to get back to the capital. I can't wait. Okay. I said, why? She said, well, when I go to the hotel, the Intercontinental, they're going to have European food. No rice. <laughs> I can't have any more rice. She so, didn't like it. Yeah, no, but I mean, like I said, the, the, um, some of it becomes commercialized, but some of it is the street food is, is very nice. Mm -hmm. Really, really good cooks. And I saw some of the... Um, the fish markets, you know, it's like entertainment mm -hmm. when you have the fish markets. They're um, talking, yeah? They're talking and there's live fish everywhere. Um, but fishing is, as we know, is very big yeah. in the Bangladeshi industry. And um, I think third or fourth largest export yes. in the world, I think, yeah. is Bangladesh, something like that. So <coughs> I was very lucky, you know, I saw all these Bangladeshi fish. Um, and we had a lot of traditional food, but we still had, like I said, the... Um, more western type of curry or western type of food um, but i liked it when i went to um i think it was uh shundarban that's mm -hmm. the largest mangrove forest so yeah. we were on a um uh, a boat to it because you can't there's no, no. habitable area safe. there yeah and i'll never forget i love bangladeshi fish but the bones is a big problem for me challenging for it's you. challenging yeah <laughs> uh, like uh, as you were invited by the uh, government officials and so what was your uh, suggestion to them because we can see so many of our generation people like in this country they are going to uh, different different country but not interested going back to Bangladesh yeah in some cases they go to see their uh, relatives or you know dad house mom house but what is your suggestion to them uh, how to improve and do you think that uh, uh, making our holiday in bangladesh uh, is interesting and is is, is something yeah. we can do I, I think definitely never forget your roots you know generations might go down the line but you should be proud you know my parents are from bangladesh very proud you know i do a lot um, but i do advise the um, minister i speak very regularly with him uh, probably about once a week every fortnight I speak with him so he asks my opinion as a British born Bangladeshi uh, NRB non-residential Bangladeshi you know how can we boost the tourism and I say to him 
you know, it's you got such a beautiful country, but it's not out there enough. You know, even I didn't know about Poi Hali Poi Shak, I think. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I didn't know about this. I don't know about Shundarbon, Bandarbon until I went there. So I've advised, he's done a lot, I think. Um, so now there's flights from Manchester mm -hmm. to Sillet, yeah. um, so which he done under his leadership. Um, it was done. So that was a very big thing. Biman as well, he was telling me they haven't made any job cuts yet. But I've advised him, target your non-residential Bangladeshis first. So target people like myself, you know, and say, look, we've got this, we've got that. Come to Bangladesh, come visit Bangladesh. Um, then they will automatically say to their friends, like I am, I'm telling a lot of my English friends now, Oh, Bangladesh is beautiful, it's got this, it's got that, which they didn't know about. And some of them are now becoming interested in, in coming to Bangladesh. So I think first you've got to start with your own, bring them there, um, and they will automatically spread the word. But I've, I've given a lot of suggestions mm -hmm. to the ministry. Um, uh, I'd, I'd done a page report for him, um, sorry, a f uh, about a 10 page report, and I suggested how we can boost tourism. Um, so. Obviously, with COVID, things have slowed yeah, yeah, that right changed. down. It's changed. it's changed. Nobody's flying anywhere, anywhere. So I hope they take some of my advice on board. You know, I haven't done it for any gain. It's just my suggestion. Um, and I hope, you know, the country is such a beautiful country. It deserves to be up there with the, with the biggest tourism countries. Thank you. Thank you very much, Faj. Uh, we're going to go for a short break again. Priyo Darshuk, our brother, meet the governor. Ask our the inspirational governor, Mr. Faj. We're going to come back after a short break. Salam alaikum, Piyo Darshuk. Biro Tirpur Abaro Firasla. Apna Tir Piyo Channel and TV the Mitta Governor Onustane. Me Akramul Hussain Achi Apna Tir Shathe. Abong Amra Aske Kotha Bolche. Amade Aske Roti Ti Mr. Fads. Uh, Mr. Fads, uh, uh, your chef. Yep. Are you waiter? I was a waiter. Now I'm a chef. You are a chef. <laughs> yeah. And you are a governor. I'm a governor. Yeah. Delivery so, driver. Everything. Delivery driver. Everything. <laughs> All in one. <laughs> so. Is it a job? Is it hard? Hard, I say, because I don't then deliver it. But problem to manage is a staff problem. So after the way, waiter enough, nai, chef enough, nai, kitchen pot, mm -hmm. delivery driver, nai, Friday and Saturday, kill and buy. So, governor is multi skilled. It's a problem for both. So, is that is that a reason? Like, our young generation, they don't want to take too much of pressure. I think some of it is. I have a. I'm not sure which is like if we see you, if we look into you, probably nobody will say these things. But sometimes I'm not sure you're interested to do a nine to five job. Yeah. Sometimes, like, I'm we don't want to take too much of pressure. Yeah, we are, we are uh, in terms of our salary, in terms of our income, is enough. Yeah. So why should we go for this much headache? Well, I think family life. People say, you know, if you have children as well, they come back from school three o'clock. You're going into a restaurant. You're going in four o'clock, five o'clock. You come home. They're sleeping. So there's certain, you know, uh, certain unsociable aspects of it. But then, if you're career driven in anything you know you know you're you've got a successful career there's no such thing nine to five you mm -hmm, know no. my friend he's uh he's quite a big director he's flying to japan he's flying to there they're coming home there's nothing nine to five there's nothing really nine to five if you want to be any you know you want to be a really successful person in your industry you're going to work around the clock Absolutely. that's part and parcel of it Absolutely. if you want a relaxed life you know i just want to go nine to five get my salary spend more time then that's fine but anything you want to be top of your game you're going to have you know less of a social life you know you're going to miss that so it's, it's how much sacrifice you want to make for your career really but restaurant work is chef work especially i find is very physical chef work very very hard i say very you hard. know uh, the physically on a company rather than problem mm. at all um uh, you tandoori know, chef? Tandoori chef, very hard. You know, I, my ha I always say to uh, some of the English chefs I've got, I've said, look, you've got to expect 
cuts mm. and burns on your hand. If you're scared of cuts or you're scared of burning your hand, this job isn't for you. I, you know, all chefs you see they have cuts and burns all over their hand. Tandoori is a very difficult job. You know, you've got to put your hand. Mm. But the f naan bread is fantastic. Uh, what do you say? Echon on Echrestrento Tara, what's it called? You know, all the mach machines come, oven. Oven. It's ready made. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's, there's some. All the foods are ready made. Yeah. So, is, is, what's, what's your opinion? Well, I mean, there's a big debate about it. People are cutting corners now, mm -hmm. or they're trying to shortcut because it's a staff problem. Mm -hmm. So, I've seen machines that make the naans that are easier. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah there's uh, I think a company called Titan is one of them. They do it where you just, you know, a friend of mine, he has a restaurant. He said, look, I've got students making naan breads. They just put it in like a pizza oven, mm -hmm. similar. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had once or twice the bread. It's, it's okay. I wouldn't say this thing, but you can't beat the tandoori oven. You know, the tandoori oven okay. is really, you know, the flame coming. It's, it's, it's the authenticity. I, I, that's my opinion. But I can understand why people are switching because, you know, they're going to have problems. You know, tandoori chef is a very hard job to fulfill and it's a very tough job. It's, you know, making naan is probably the most skilled job. You know, making curry is like, okay, you make this, this. You know, you can work out how to do things. But the skill in making a naan, that was one of the things that, you know, it took me a long time to learn mm -hmm. after a lot of cuts, uh, sorry, after a lot of burns. But um, I, I prefer the actual tandoori oven we use. Why do you think that's important? Well, I think the way... But in this situation where you're facing so many staff crisis, and yeah. you probably don't know when your tandoori is going to take day off. Yeah, yeah. so th there is a problem, you know, like you said. So... You know, I've thought about switching, but we've, we've kind of left it, you know, we've survived with tandoori chefs at the moment, and we've kind of done it. But the, the flame makes the naan like a char-grilled mm. thing. And the other machinery, I don't think they have that effect. Or if you make shik kebab, chicken tikka, you know, you skewer it on, mm -hmm. and it gives you that char-grilled, you know, effect. And these machines, these titan machines, they only do the bread. They won't be able to do your chicken tikka. They won't be able to do your shik kebab. So you have to have a tandoori oven regardless whether you make the naans. Okay. So... But, uh, uh, in terms of uh, financial uh, things, you need to invest some of on your machineries. Yeah. And then uh, if, you are, if you can manage, then probably it will work for you. Otherwise, it's yeah. going to be... Yeah, cheap. definitely. I mean, technology is changing every day and they're making things easier. And yeah, you've got to invest in, in technologies. You know, we have EPOS systems and stuff like that. So we will analyze the data mm -hmm. and have a look. Okay, so normally on a Friday, Saturday, we average, we're selling 50 pillar rice. Mm. So it helps us manage the kitchen more because we know how much stock to make. Mm. Or, you know, we can re print out a report of what front of house we've sold, you know, five um, cans of coke on takeaway. So we know, okay, when we do the ordering, five cans of co coke have gone, we'll order another five. You know, obviously we sell more, but I'm just giving you an example. So we've got to use that technology. We've got to look at it. Uh, obviously social media is very big, uh, but there's a lot of other machinery. You know, you have um, Uber Eats, Just Eat and people like that. So Uber Eats are very good because their analytics is very good. So. Now, a lot of people, they don't like to phone and complain, but Uber gives you the option of, and Just Eat as well, uh, Uber's a bit more detailed, but they give you options for customer feedback. So it's very important, mm -hmm. you know, so... You, you're talking about reviews? Reviews, yeah. So you can see if anything, you know, if, if you have too many uh, bad reviews on certain things, then you know, right, we need to change this, this isn't working. Um, or that isn't working, you know, this dish. Or, so it's, it's, it's good. You've got to look into things like that. You've got to read it. You've got to see. Any business can always improve. Nobody's 100% perfect. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, one very important thing uh, that uh, you just mentioned, some of the machines, um, just the 
Uber Eats, Deliveroo. So are they really helping our industry, particularly car industry? Well, there's a big debate. I think you've probably heard a lot of debate. Yes and no, I, I think is is thing. There's advantage and disadvantage. So before COVID, we weren't on anything. Um, no, none of these platforms. Simply we done direct ordering um, deliveries. Deliveries were okay, but it wasn't our core business. Our core business was eating in. Mm -hmm. um, so we thought, you know, we, we've got, we're quite a big restaurant, 100 to 150 seater. So we wanted to concentrate on eating in. Um, we weren't very, you know, takeaways, whatever we got was a bonus. But then COVID obviously happened and then takeaway was our only business. Um, so we jumped on all these platforms and in a way they helped us because they bought us a lot more customers but they take such a hefty commission which is a bit you know takeaways are less margin anyway so like I said we didn't concentrate on takeaway because eating in our profits are much higher so we said we're going to concentrate on this but then COVID happened and even now people are still scared to come out even though they can um, so when restaurants reopened um, before the 19th, the restaurants reopened, we were very quiet. By the 19th, the government gave a bit more, they relaxed it. We got a bit busier for eating in. So in one sense, yes, they've bought us business, which is really good because especially during the pandemic, takeaways were all what we, we were surviving on. But the hefty commission, they've got to come down, really. They've got to come down. Do by you think they're going to come down? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, they, I don't know what they're thinking. But because everything is going up, <coughs> price and everything. So Everything's do, going up, yeah. Why I mean, should they come up? Come they, down? they say it's non-negotiable. Um, we, we've managed to negotiate with, with Uber. So if they say, look, we're going to take this, push them. There will be a rep in each area for your restaurant. Okay. So in, 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 in your answer, we can say that they are not useful for our industry. We, if we can do something from ourselves, then probably it will be more easier yeah. and more helpful for us. For example, like they provide a review service on their platform. Mm. Why don't you do your own platform and you use your Google My Business page, which is yeah. review management, trip advisor. Yeah. This is all in your account. Yeah, yeah. And you do pr prepare something very nice, very unique where a customer can because these things they have done, they created something to in favor of the customers. Yeah. So which customers? It's your customers, it's Akash yeah. customers. Why don't Akash do it? Yeah. So, so that's one thing probably we are behind. And you guys need to promote these things yeah. to save the industry. Yeah, definitely. So we have our own app. We have our, our online systems. You can review all them and that's fine. Um, but Uber just the, the it's, it's sorry uh, to cut you uh, off. Yeah, no, that's Basically, fine. Uh, in our mind, what you uh, as we I'm doing this program for a long time, and I really really connected with you guys. I understand your feelings. Uh, sometimes we are we are a bit lazy. Mm. We don't want to communicate with our people. We don't want to communicate yeah. for us. We we rather communicate with Justin. Mm. talk about the commission but we don't go to in in depth to make something for us for future well yeah i mean you you're exactly right so we we were never on them platforms before because we've done so much marketing Absolutely. that we used to be happy with with the amount of customers we had and we thought we don't want to send out food with justy and uber eats and not really make anything what's what's the yeah. point you know we're we're in business really um, and we don't want to put too much pressure on our kitchen that you know the food we've got we're too busy with um the takeaway orders but if we had uh, we had a strong marketing team which was which was fine but they actually their commission you can say you're paying for advertising their marketing I know they're gonna make it because they have got probably someone who's very good at business developing so they're yeah. gonna tell things exactly. like you know yeah. to convince you anyway thank you anyway uh, mr Fadja. thank I'm you really um, really uh, proud to know some of your story and i hope you can do much more for the industry. Uh -huh. We are very uh, end of this program and thank you, thanks again for coming for such a long way. Thank you very much, no problem. Well, I'm gonna keep working hard for the industry. I'm gonna keep doing what I can. I'm gonna keep trying to recruit in the young guys and be a voice 
for the Thank industry. You. Thank you. Be a voice for the industry. Thank you so much. Thank I you like no this. Priyadarshuk, uh, I'm going to talk to you about this. I'm going to Mr. Fanj. এবং ফাজ পোস্ট মোড় থেকে এসেছেন আপনারা সবাই জানেন আকাশ রেস্টুরেন্ট একটি খুব নাম করে একটি রেস্টুরেন্ট এবং এই নামের পেছনের আরো বেশ কিছু কারণ রয়েছে এর মধ্যে একটি কারণ আপনারা আমরা অনেকক্ষণ আলাপ করেছি যে হি 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 স্যান্ড কারি হিজ কারি টু ফ্রান্স সো দিস টাইপ অফ মার্কেটিং আই আই উড সাই প্রমোটিং আওয়ার ইন্ডাস্ট্রি ইজ ওয়ান টাইপ অফ মার্কেটিং ফর ইউর ওন ভেঞ্চার অ্যান্ড অলসো উই হ্যাভ talking uh, we've been talking about uh, third party platform we mentioned few names apnara shobai ekta jinish khyal korben je amader moddho thekeo kichuta sachetonota dorkar amra jodi nije nije aware kori amra jodi nije ekto try kori the big master is google just googling uh, make him your mama and just ask him and you will be okay in your business ebong amra amader generation niye kotha bolechi uh, faz is part of this and he made it successful life in this industry so hopefully amra ajker program theke kichu guruttopurno totthyo janlam ebong shei totthyor madhyome jodi amra amader byabsar moddhe kaaje lagate pare tahole hoyto ba ei business ei industry amaderke ja diyeche amra kichu ta holo industry ke dewar shomoy hoyeche ebong seta amra dite parbo shei protyasha byakto rakhe ajker moto ekhane bidhay nichchi shobai bhalo thakben সুস্থ থাকবেন নিরাপদে থাকবেন এবং পরবর্তী মির্দা গাভনারে আরও একজন ইন্সপারেশনাল গাভনার নিয়ে আপনাদের সামনে হাজির হবো সেই পর্যন্ত আসসালামু আলাইকুম ওরহমতুল্লাহি অবরাকাতু